Okay, this is just kind of a recap of some things of what you should... You know, you're going to see some problems are exactly the same as what you just did on your own, but some problems are not, okay? All these equations have an x to the second power. Well, that means there's two answers that we need to find. So with those two answers, I have x to the second, and I've also got this x to the one. So that's two different ones. That's why you have to use this process known as factoring. But unlike the sheet you just did, I'm going to underline my terms. I have negative 3 and 30. That's only two terms. So I just, I just do the GCF. You're not going to see that T table. That's what you do when there's three. Okay, And I don't need to do the A, B, C thing. Okay, I just need to figure out what the GCF is out of these two terms. So remember, three parts of a GCF. Do you have a negative in front? Yes, you do. Because it's negative right there. You have x second and x to the 1 on both lines. So you, you take your x to the 1. Okay. Now, you, you weren't doing this on the ones you just did because you always had that one number that didn't even have an x. But this time, they both have x of some kind. Okay. Then on your GCF calculator, you got a different one than me. You go 3, 30. It won't let you do negatives, unfortunately. And the GCF's 3. Okay. So, negative 3x to the 1 goes on the line here. And I'm going to put a parenthesis there. And that's your f1. Okay. And then I go up and divide by negative 3x to the 1. Okay, and um, I can cross out. When I have x1 over x1, I can cross the x's off they, if I have them to the same power, but not here because that's a 2, that's a 1. So I divide. I take negative 3 divided by negative 3, and that's 1. Okay. And then for x, remember, the x didn't cross out. We take 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay. So that x is to the 1 power. Okay. And then I take positive 30 divided by negative 3. So negative 10. So remember, when we're factoring, we want to put a 10. But if it's negative, we want to put a subtraction. Okay, now this is your F2. Now, those first powers, those where you put the little ones, get rid of those at this point. Okay, it's good to have them there, but now we do our F1, F2. So negative 3x could equal 0, or 1x minus 10 could equal 0. Okay, so remember what we do with these. You dot your x and circle, dot your x and circle. Here there's no plus minus, it's just division, okay, by negative 3. Okay, I go right to division there. 0 divided by negative 3 is 0, so there's your first answer. And over here we've got a minus 10, so we do the plus 10. And 1 times x equals 10. Okay, then divide by 1 if you want. 10 divided by 1 just keeps it at 10. So 0 and 10 are my two answers to the problem. So if I just, I'm going to start underlining, and if I just make two lines, then it's just the GCF. Okay, the GCF will get me at this point where I want to be. Okay, now the next one's a tidbit different. There's two answers because we have x to the second. And we also have x to the first. Okay. So now let's make our lines 1, 2, and 24. How many lines did I just make there? I made 3. Okay. So that's why whenever there's 3, we're going to see the GCF box, but then there's going to be that T after it. Okay. So. GCF, always in the first. Now, now the first number is not negative, so no negative. We have x2, x1, but 24 doesn't have x, so we can't do any kind of x with it. And then 1, 2, and 24 is what I'll punch in there. Okay, So 1, 2, 24. And that just gives me 1 as my GCF. Okay, So the GCF there is 1. So if all I have for the GCF is 1, I'm not going to do it, okay? So I'm just going to put x across it out. That means that's a wasted step. Now, so that takes me to my table. So I go A, B, C. So I connect the A to the C by multiplying, okay? 
I take positive 1 times negative 24. And that's 24 negative. Put the negative up there. Okay, so if I have a negative, I will be doing a minus. And the minus needs to equal 2, which is negative. So just remember that. Okay. So now I swing my division loop. And then 24 divided by 1 is 24. 24 minus 1 is not 2, though. Okay. So I put it, imagine putting a 2. Now take 24 divided by 2. 2, 12. 12 minus 2 is not 2. Okay. Now imagine putting a 3 down. 3, 8. Okay, so 8 minus 3 is not 2. It's getting closer. Okay, 4, 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. Good. So I can circle those. Now, the six, sign the number. 6, look over here. It's negative 2. So 6 has to be negative. Then you can cross that out. Now, we have a negative on top here. That means they have to be the opposite. Okay. So if that's negative, the 4 is positive. Okay, now my a up there is 1x to the second. So I'm going to make my two parentheses, and I can just go 1, 1, 1x, 1x. Then we take these numbers from here, 4 and 6. So plus 4 minus 6. That's f1, that's f2. Okay, so remember this equals 0 here, okay? So, I set each factor equal to 0. So, 1x plus 4 could equal 0. 1x minus 6 could equal 0. So, dot your x. Dot your x. So, minus 4, minus 4. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And then divide by 1. Negative 4 divided by 1 is negative 4. Then, plus 6 plus 6, 1 times x equals 6, because we're 0 plus 6 is 6, and then divide by 1, 6 divided by 1 is 6. So negative 4 and 6 are the two answers here. But how I got the answers differ, okay? Here you just did the GCF part because there's only two terms, x squared and x to the 1. So the GCF's all you need. But with this, the GCF got me nowhere. I had to use my table. Okay, let's do a two on the back. Okay, there are two solutions to this. Okay, and again, that's because we have x to the second, and we also have x to the power of 1 on that 16. Okay, so let's underline. Um, by the way, that 14 is, that is not a negative 14. Okay, I don't want that as a negative. Okay, so now underline your large numbers, 14 and 16. How many numbers did you just underline? Two. You did two. So the GCF's all you're going to need to do, okay, if you know how to do the three things. First off, 14, do you, is that a negative 14? No, it's not, so I'm not going to have a negative. You have both the lines contain x, x second, x1. So x1's got to be in the GCF. Then 14 and 16. Okay, you GCF calculate those, 14 comma 16, and I got 2. So, I need to go through with the GCF because it's not just a 1, it's 2x to the first. So, 2x to the first goes out, and that's going to serve as F1. Okay, then go divide up here by 2x to the 1. Remember, when you're dividing by x, you can cross out x's somewhere. It would be right here because they're to the same power. Okay, and then 14 divided by 2. That's what you're doing, dividing by 2. The big numbers, you just divide like regularly. Then on the x, you take 2 minus 1. Okay, 2 minus 1, which you know is 1. So 7x to the 1 power. And then positive 16 divided by positive 2 is 8. It's positive 8, so we're going to put 8 with a plus sign. And that's my F2. Now, these X's, get those first powers out of there because we don't want them when we set them equal to 0. 
So either 2x could equal 0, or 7x plus 8 could equal 0. So dot your x, circle it, dot your x, circle it. We have no plot. We go right to division by 2. 0 divided by 2, that is going to be 0. Okay, and then here you got to do the opposite of plus 8 first, so subtract 8. Now that is not 0. When you add or subtract, it doesn't stay at 0. It's negative 8. So 7 multiplied by x equals negative 8. And then we're going to divide by 7. It's negative 1.14. Okay, round accordingly. That's how you get your two answers there. Okay, now there's two answers here. We have x second, we have x to the 1, okay, because you get the 1 there. 24 doesn't have anything. Okay, now underline your big numbers. 1, 11, 24. How many lines did we just do? We did 3, so... That's why you see this chart here, because there's three. Here there was just two. So GCF, at least think about it, the one is not negative, so we don't have a negative. I have x second, I have x1, but I don't have an x there, so I can't put x, any kind of x there. And then 1, 11, and 24. By the way, on your GCF calculator, whenever one is one of the numbers you punch in, it's going to be a GCF of one. Right. And a GCF of 1, only a 1 with no negative, no x, that means that's a big fat waste of time. So that got you nowhere. Well, now you need a plan B. A, B, C. So connect your A to your C with the times. Okay, Positive 1 times positive 24. That's positive 24. 24, put the positive. That's important that it's positive because a positive tells you you're going to add and you're trying to get it to add to 11. Now, 11 is negative, okay? So 1 and 24. 24 add 1, that's 25, not 11. Now, imagine if I put a 2 there, I'd divide 24 by 2. That's 12. Now, if you take 12 and add 2, you're at 13, 14. That's not 11. Imagine putting a 3 there. Okay. Okay, 3 and 8. Well, 8 plus 3. You got 9, 10, 11. There you go. Okay. Okay, so 8. Well, 11's negative. That means 8's got to be negative. And since we have a positive up there in the bubble, that means the signs are the same. So that's minus. So to make them the same, that would be minus or negative. Okay, now look up there. The A is 1. So we're just going to make two parentheses, 1, 1, and then x, x, and then 3 and 8. But those would both be minuses. Okay. So that's how you get your F1, F2 out of that. Okay. So 1x minus 3 equals 0, 1x minus 8 equals 0. So dot your x, circle it, dot your x, circle it. So plus 3, plus 3. So 1 times x equals 3. You can divide by 1, that's fine. 3 divided by 1 is 3. Okay. Plus 8, plus 8. 1 times x equals 8. Divide by 1, divide by 1. 8 divided by 1 is 8. Okay, so again, how you get the two answers, but how you get them differs. If there's two terms, at this point, we're just doing the GCF part. But if there's three, there'll be the GCF, which a lot of times doesn't work at this point in time, and then the chart.